Hi everyone, welcome to my devlog series where you can follow me making my new voxel open world sandbox game. In the last episode, we implemented more lighting options, such as point lights, directional lights and day night cycle. The feedback from the first two episodes was amazing, thank you. This time, we're going to add multiple block types to diversify our terrain. To do this, we will store the data in a JSON file to allow faster modifications and later modding. In this episode, we will also modify the terrain generator to make a more realistic terrain and use the full potential of our new blocks. Just before we get started, I've noticed that most of my viewers are not subscribers. So if you want to follow the development of the game, don't forget to subscribe. It helps me a lot. Let's get started. So first, what's a block? It can be seen as a Minecraft block. It has an idea, a name, a color rather than a texture, as well as some properties like how it reflects the light, if it is transparent, solid, etc. Right now, when generating the terrain, every vertex has the same color, stored as three floats taking 12 bytes. In our new system, each vertex will have an idea stored in a byte, which is a huge 44% decrease in memory usage. All the blocks are going to be stored in a JSON file, which is a simple, readable and flexible way to store data. And then they will be converted to a Java array and passed as a uniform to the shaders. Then, given the idea, they'll be able to retrieve the correct block info. First, I modified the shaders to handle the new block data. I created a custom struct, then a list passed as a uniform in the fragment shader. Next, I started modifying the rest of the program to handle the new behavior. We organized the shaders, the renderers, and created the block class, and filled all of the used properties that I need. I also made the JSON file and filled it with a few blocks, and then created a JSON loader class that will read the JSON file and convert it into an array of the block I just made. The problem is that I don't know anything about parsing JSON to Java, so I just imported some library that will do that for me. And finally, I shamelessly copied some code I found on Stack Overflow. And there we go! Ok, after a few hours of programming without testing, I assume that it will be a miracle if everything was fine. And finally, when the program decided to compile, uh, nothing was here. So I looked for what was wrong and ended up posting my problem on Stack Overflow. The next day in the morning, someone proposed a nice solution but I found a more satisfying workaround myself. And yes, it's working. And now we will be able to modify the terrain generation to use the full potential of our new system. First, the grass layer will only be one block thick, so everything under it will be dirt instead. Let's also increase the terrain scale because it is too flat. As you can see now, we have two types of blocks but the terrain isn't realistic. 
it is way too smooth, too regular. We need to improve it. But how it is generated in the first place? A chunk is made of two things. Its grid, which is just a 32 by 32 by 256 huge list of values between 0 and 255, representing the ID of the blocks. And its model, which is just a huge list of info for each vertex of the model. Position, normal idea, and block idea. I talked about it in the last devlog, so don't forget to check it out if you didn't. Then, I am doing the exact same thing every game uses to generate their terrain. Pearly noise. And, more accurately, simplex noise. Basically, for each block's position, I'm calling a function that takes as input an x and y coordinate and returns a value between let's say minus 1 and 1. However, the values are not random. They are coherent and make these smooth gradients. How does it work? Uh, I don't know. It is probably black magic. Then, with some scaling and offsetting, I can use this value as the 8 in a specific position and decide what will be the ideas of the block at this position. The results are already impressive, but we can do way better by combining multiple values of simplex noise, each with a much smaller scale and weight to the final values. The first noise values determine the global shape, then the next one little bumps and finally little details. To implement that, I need to rework the entire terrain generation system, because I was lazy when I implemented it and now I can't refine it. Let's get to work! At some point, the program finally compiled, but the game crashed a lot. I had so many bugs, it took hours to fix everything. And finally, it was back! But now I can implement the multiple noises, and actually, the result was very satisfying. Now, I can do even more. I can modify my noise function to do anything. For example, here I added a 3D simplex noise. It generates a 3D version of the simplex noise and by using a threshold, I can determine whether a block is solid or not. With this technique, I can theoretically create hoverings, cliffs and caves. But as you can see, the results were not very good for the moment. So I decided to not use it for now. At this point, I had to disable the collision system, because it broke for no reason. Next, I used another 2D simplex noise function to offset the values of the first noise. This is another technique to create cliffs, because now I can change the input of the height map, so making them more spaced to each other results in a stiffer edges. I played around a little with my new tools for hours. For now, I want to make the most satisfying mountains biome. And finally, here is what I came with. I find these beautiful. They are some flatter areas next to stiff mountains. Later, when I will implement caves, water, vegetation, and then ambient occlusion, color transitions, and post-processing effects, 
I think that the result will be wonderful. That's it for this devlog. It was a bit long, and I worked a lot this week. Mainly because the terrain generator is one of the main mechanics of the game. It has to be efficient and without a single bug because the player literally stands on top of it. Next time, I will work on the physics engine because right now the collisions are broken. I will fix the collider and add gravity and the ability to jump. I will also add a player model and a third person controller. And if I have the time, I will implement frustum coding, which will optimize the rendering. This is going to be epic. If you like this video and you want to support the project, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. It is really motivating. Thanks for watching.